Hey guys, Taz from Critical Thinking Anarchist here. Uh, I just want to give my opinion on the whole Wisconsin uh, Supreme Court striking down the governor's safer at home order, or rather not quite his order. It was in fact, uh, I apologize, I don't have a script for this one. It wasn't Tony Evers' stay at home order, but the Department of Health and Human Services Secretary, Andrea Palm, an Evers appointee. So it was an unelected official who made the order. Essentially, unlike most other states who they have their teams of people, of health experts and things like that, and those people make their recommendations and then their governors issue the executive orders. In Wisconsin, the governor gave that power to the Department of Health and Human Services secretary. And essentially what happened is that the Supreme Court overruled that, saying that she doesn't have that authority. The whole point of bringing it to the Wisconsin Supreme Court was the fact that the governor gave someone powers that was not an elected official and that it didn't go through legislature to give them that power. So the point being that if he wanted to give his Department of Health and Human Services secretary the power to issue these orders, he needed to go through the state legislature first to say, hey, can I give this power to this person? And then they needed to say yes or no to that. If they did, then essentially it's kind of like an elected representative where all your elected representatives of the state decided to say, yes, we trust this person enough to give them that. And it's kind of like how essentially uh, how Supreme Court appointees work. So the pr Supreme Court appointees are not elected officials. They are people who are nominated by by someone for that position and then they are vetted through the governor and then the legislature and everything like that. And then they essentially become an elected official based on the people that you elected to appoint them to that position because then they've all vetted and voted on that person for you, the voter. That is essentially how a democratic republic works is that you you vote for people to make decisions in your best interest because to vote on literally everything, to have millions of people vote on literally everything that goes on your state is just never going to be feasible. So the whole thing is you do not want an unelected official to have essentially a private person having control over your actions. You do not. When you work at a job, your boss tells you what to do, but you're working for that person. When you go home, that boss does not get to tell you what to do. And then that is essentially what this, what Tony Evers did here is he told you that, hey, this person who you have zero elected representative with is telling you what to do. So it's just some private asshole gets to tell you what to do in your life. That's not right. That should never be the case. You elected people to make decisions for you, but then you have an elected representative, just one, just one representative saying, hey, I'm going to give this person who you didn't elect the power to tell you what to do because I don't want to do that right now. I'm, I'm going to trust this person to do it. You know, it's not, it's, she's an advisor who is now, who now has power, or at least who then had power. But that power was given to her by one person, not by the state representatives. And that's, and again, you know, whether you agree with the decision or not, it's something that should never have happened in the first place. Governor Evers should have said, she is my, rep, you know, she is my advisor. She's advising me to do this. I'm going to take five seconds out of my day to issue an ex to issue the executive order. He had the power to do that. He did do that. He, he, he did it until April 24th. And then she extended it to May 26th. But she is nobody. She is an appointed representative, not an elected representative. So he tried to delegate his responsibility to somebody else, which isn't right. It's his responsibility. And all he had to do was just do it himself. I don't get why... I don't get why he did it, and I don't get why he is trying to, you know, blame anyone else for it. Because we all know if it were the other way around, if it was a Republican governor, and for those who don't know, necessarily Evers is a Democratic governor currently. Uh, currently, Wisconsin has a Republican legislature. If they had a Republican governor and a Democratic legislature, 
and the Republican governor appointed someone and then gave them a certain power to do, uh, gave them exactly the same power. If it was just switched, the Democrats would have 100% absolutely done the same thing and said, hey, you don't not you don't have the right to give a private employee, essentially a private citizen, the authority to act on your behalf. Because the only, there and there is a succession around that. I mean, that's why you have a lieutenant governor. If the governor is unable to act in his own interest, in her own interest, the lieutenant governor takes over for that. So if, if Evers was unavailable for whatever reason, then his lieutenant governor should have been the one issuing the orders. But that's not the case. He was available. His lieutenant governor was, I'm assuming, available, but wasn't in power. He just decided to give the power to somebody else without asking anybody for permission to do so. And yes, he has to ask permission to do so. And I would say this, it doesn't matter your political affiliation. This should have been done every single time. Doesn't matter who, you know, which political affiliation was in power in the governorship. Doesn't matter which political affiliation was in power in the legislature. If a Democratic governor and a Democratic legislature were in the power together, the Democratic legislature would also be wise to question that and say, hey, you do not have the authority to give a private citizen the power to tell other private citizens how to run their lives. They elected you. You need to be the one doing this. You are taking power away from not only yourself, but also the legislature. You're taking power away from elected people. Now, as far as the Supreme Court decision to just nix the the six-day stay, because the Republicans actually asked for a six-day stay on the stay-at-home thing. So they actually wanted the stay-at-home order to, once the decision was made, to stick around for another six days. So the Republicans actually wanted the stay-at-home order to extend for another six days after the order was canceled, but the Supreme Court overruled that, which is pretty interesting. So unfortunately, that meant that all of Wisconsin just suddenly opened wide up. Nothing, you know, everything went back to normal. So depending on which businesses and everything else, some, some are choosing to, you know, follow the the safer at-home orders, I guess, you know, where they have social distancing and sanitization procedures and all that other fun stuff. But a lot of them just opened up and said, everybody come in, old style, you know, no masks, no gloves, no, I don't know about the sanitization procedures, but no social distancing. So, I mean, it's just free for all again, you know, back to, back to life as usual. Um, whether that isn't good or bad, we will see. You know, my, I mean, my personal belief is that this was blown out of proportion, but whether, you know, uh, you know, going all kind of Wild West on it, uh, which even the Wild West isn't doing. <laughs> Wild West, oddly enough, they, uh, they actually did wear gloves and masks. But, or at least bandanas. But the whole point being is that they're not practicing any of the safer measures. And we will see what comes of that. And, and it may be nothing, you know. It may just be that this really was just kind of a, a flu-like thing. And it just happened to be that it caused a lot of panic and caused a lot of upheaval. And it really didn't need to. Um, that is entirely possible. It is also possible that, no, we should have done at least some of the procedures. You know, I personally, I, just, I think the sanitization procedures does about 90% of the work. The social distancing and the masks kind of achieve the same goal, but people are stupid. I mean, the whole the whole point of social distancing is that supposedly the virus can only travel six feet. So if it can only travel six feet, or you know, less than six feet, then there's no point in wearing the mask. But you wear the mask because people are dumb and can't stay six feet away from each other. So you wear the mask, which negates the six feet, but wearing the mask and the six feet, yeah, it, it just kind of self-fulfilling prophecy. It's just it's just two things that achieve the same goal. But the sanitization, obviously, you know, that destroys the virus. It cleans things up. It's things that, you know, and for a lot of the things, it's things that probably should be done on a more regular basis and a lot more businesses than we ever really had. Anyway, that's my thoughts. Hope you all are staying safe out there. Why that one became the catchphrase for it all, I do not know. It's not like it's dangerous to go outside. It's just 
ill-advised. Anyway, like if you liked it, subscribe, and I will come back with more content. Talk to you later.